Yes. How, how much is the length? Correct. It's the length times the width. So is it x minus 2 times y minus 3? Excellent. Of course. Thank you very much. Who said so? Person. Thank you. Very good. So if this is x, and I have 1 inch here and 1 inch here, so this must be x minus 2. If this is y, and I have 2 inches here and 1 inch here, obviously this must be y minus 3. Great job. I will distribute. I get xy. I get minus 3x. I get minus 2y. And I get plus 6. I will replace xy, because it's 180. Minus 3x, minus 2y, plus 6. I'm going to edit here. 186, that's how lazy people do things. And, of course, again, I have to get rid of one of the two variables. Not a problem, because I know that xy equals 180. So then y will be, can anyone tell us why? Is it 180 divided by x? Perfect. So I'm going to plug it in. So finally, I can say that a1 is a function of x, as I wanted it to be. 186 minus 3x and minus 2 times 180, which is 360 over x. Once I establish this, from this moment on, is a piece of cake. Because I know what I've studied the entire semester, right? I differentiate, set it equal to 0, show max min, whatever. And I'm done. So this is the trick, if you want, establishing and finding the function. If the function is given to us, then there is no trick. But the function is not given to us most of the time in the optimization world. We have to find the function and then find its mass. So then A prime, I'm sorry, A1 prime is, can anyone give us A1 prime? Is it going to be a negative 3 plus one, uh, 360 over x squared? That's it. So this would be x squared in the denominator. This is the only negative 3x squared plus 360. So then the next step, I think I'm on page 7. Yes. So uh, the next step. I set it equal to 0, so a1 prime equals 0. What do I have to write? Uh, just the top, the, the numerator? Yes. Set to zero. Yes. So then I get an x squared. When I move and divide by 3, I get 120. Next step. How do I solve this? Square root of both sides. And this time I will not consider two solutions. I would if you want, but only x equals positive 120. And I will simplify it a little bit by writing 4 times 30. So then x equals the square root of 4, which is 2, and the square root of 30, which is the square root of 30. And we're talking about inch. I claim that this gives a ma maximum. Who cares what I claim? I have to show. Show that x equals 2 to the square root of 30 gives a max printed area. You cannot trust. We have to show. OK, so this is x. This is a prime, a 1 prime, of course and a 1, so 0 to the square root of 30. Of course, that's not possible. OK, 0 here. So I have to look at um, the sign now. So I'm not going to waste my time with the denominator. When I plug in 0, positive. On the uh, other side, when I replace um, x by 100, 100 squared, this will definitely be negative. So, although you can say, but this is the formality. It is, but we have to show it. 
So obviously it's guaranteed to be a maximum. What is the maximum? And also I have to determine, um, so I know that this is to the square root of 30, but I also have to determine the width. So, so the length and the width of the printed area. Um, I'm sorry, I was thinking the x and the y. This will be known immediately, so I know that this is uh, going to be 2 to the square root of 30 minus 2 inches. So now I have to determine y. So for y, we know that y was 180 divided by x, so y equals 180 divided by x, which is 2 to the square root of 30. And I will rationalize. And this is 30. So 90 divided by 30 will be 3. 3 the square root of 30. Of course, inches. So now I want to determine um, the um, A1 that I said it was maximum. And uh, A1 is 186 minus 3x minus 2y. So A1, 186 minus 3 times x to the square root of 30 and minus 2 times y, 3 the square root of 30. So 6 and 6. So this is 186 minus 12 the square root of 30. And this is in inches squared. If I need to approximate it, I will approximate it. But this is the exact, 186 minus 12 multiplied by the square root of 30 and it's 120.27 squared inches. So, bottom line, with the given restrictions and the given restriction, the uh, length and the width of the poster should be uh, 2 to the square root of 30, 2 to the square root of 30, 3 to the square root of 30, for the printed area to be the pa maximum possible given the restrictions. And this one here is 120.27 squared inches. So that's a tiny, tiny piece of optimization. But that's what it deals with. It's based on what we studied so far, analyzing the first derivative, set it equal to zero, finding critical numbers, and study the critical numbers to show whether they are max, min, whatever. Any questions? Do we feel a little bit better about optimization after these? Oh, yes, of course. So the trick is to find the function. Once I found the function, the rest is what we've been doing all, rest, all along. OK. Uh, I don't know if you want to look at uh, 43 with a piece of wire. Um, do you want to look at uh, the distance? Find a point on the curve or points on the ellipse or point on this the closest to the origin or something like that. Can we do one with the points? Yes. You could choose any any one you like. Can we do the ellipse? Please. Which one? Which number? A twenty seven. Twenty seven it is. So I'm on page eight. And we're looking at twenty seven. Uh, find the points on the ellipse 4x squared plus y squared equals 4 that are furthest away from the point 1 comma 0. Okay, very good. Perfect. So, okay, so when it comes to the ellipse, the ellipse is um, a conic section. Conic section. There are four conic sections parabola, ellipse, hyperbola. 
um, and the, uh, the ellipse, hyperbola, parabola, uh, and the circle, four. So this one, when it comes to the ellipse, the uh, general equation is x squared over a squared plus y squared over b squared equals 1. What are these? Assuming that a is bigger than b, the ellipse will look something like this, centered at the origin. It doesn't have to be centered at the origin. It can have something like this h squared over a squared plus y minus k squared over b squared equals 1. But this is this does not have anything subtracted or added to x. So obviously it, this one is centered at the origin. It's not this shifted conic. Okay, so assuming that a is bigger, this point, this vertex will be negative a, this point, one will be a, this is the um, a major axis and this is the minor axis so this will be a negative b and this will be a positive b so if we want to graph this ellipse we will have to divide both sides by four the ellipse requires we cannot identify these numbers unless we have one on one side so I have to divide both sides by four that's our first step so if I do that then I have x squared plus y squared over 4 equals 1. So basically, in this case, a is smaller than b, which means that the, uh, the ellipse is, um, has the major axis on the y-axis, not on the x-axis. Okay, then. So this is the correct graph now. So uh, 1 and negative 1, so a squared equals 1, which means a equals plus or minus 1. And b squared equals 4, which means b equals plus or minus 2. So 2 and 2. So this is the graph of uh, the ellipse in our problem. Not a perfect graph, as you see, but this is the graph. So negative 1, 1, negative 2, 2. Okay, now where is point 1, 0? So the point 1, 0 is right here. And the question is asking again, find the points, where is it? Find the points on the ellipse, okay, that are furthest away from the point 1, 0. So I would have to create a generic point anywhere here. Let's say this is my point. I'm going to call this point A. Point A has coordinates x, comma, y. I need to determine this distance. So the distance, I'm going to call this point a B. The distance A, B. Anyone remembers the formula for the distance? Anyone? the square root of so b has 0 comma 1 square root of x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared so let me write the formula for you so if we have two points let's say this and this this is point A, this is point B. Point A has coordinates x1, comma, y1, and x2, comma, y2. The distance AB equals the square root of x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. Okay, so I will clean it up a little bit. I also know that x and y have to verify the equation of the ellipse. So this point is a point on the ellipse. Its x and its y must verify the equation of the ellipse.
That is a must. Okay, moving on. Any questions so far, please? Any questions? Any questions, anyone? So what I'm going to... I'm sorry? sorry. Wouldn't point B be 1, comma 0? <laughs> <laughs> of course. Thank you for not letting me continue till the end. Yeah, no problem. I owe you. Who was that, Jordan? Oh, Sarah. Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. Of course. Yeah. Of course, it's one comma zero. Of course. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, now let me let me correct my stuff here. Uh, X. 2 minus x1, uh, y2 minus y1. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. I wasn't trying to see whether you were asleep or not. No, I wasn't. I was careless. My apologies, please. Okay, so then the distance, AB equals the square root of x minus 1 squared plus y squared. Nice, because I'm going to replace y squared by 4 minus 4x squared. So this is y squared equals 4 minus 4x squared from the given equation, of course, because simply because the point verifies the equation of, of the ellipse. So finally, I can 